He comes to us today from the wilderness, from the desert, and nothing about him is smooth, nothing is easy, nothing is comforting. He's strange, he's alien, he's coarse, he's wild. He's dressed in strange clothes and he's eating food that civilized people do not eat. And he's proclaiming a message with words as hard as his appearance. He comes saying, repent, which means something like, you're headed in exactly the wrong direction. Turn your life completely around. And as hard as he is and as hard as his words are, people are still going to him in the desert. And he baptizes many of them and he lays them down in water so that they may leave their own old backward lives in the river and rise from those waters to a new life, a life headed in the right direction. But not everybody comes with a spirit of repentance. I mean, why would pious religious experts need to repent after all? except that it's these pious religious experts that he calls you brood of vipers. John the Baptist comes to us every year at this time, early in Advent, calling for repentance from Israel and pointing to Jesus as the long expected one. And we're never quite sure, let's be honest, what to do with him. I mean, he's showing up preaching repentance right at this time of the year when what we're looking forward to is sweet stories of a baby and angels and shepherds and wise men and a gentle, loving mother. And we might just like to say to him, John the Baptist, could you just go on back into the desert and leave us alone? But he won't do that. You see, he learned some things in the desert about Israel. And by the way, whenever... Um, these folks are talking about Israel, they're also talking about the church, so don't think we're getting off from what John the Baptist is saying. So he learned some things about Israel, he learned some things about the church, he learned some things about God, and he learned some things about himself. And he comes out of the desert knowing what he has to do because he knows who he is. And what is he to do? To remind Israel who they are which means also, whether we want to hear it or not, to remind us, the church, who we are. You know, without knowing who you are, you can't really know what you're called to do. So knowing who you are is important. But I say that with a warning, because knowing who you are um, really brings a kind of judgment, too. Knowing who you are raises this question, Why aren't we being who we really are? And John the Baptist is that question in the flesh. You brood of vipers bear fruit worthy of repentance. Be who you are called to be, be Israel, and don't presume to say that you are Israel just because your father's Abraham. You are Israel by fulfilling the vocation of Israel or you are not Israel at all. So what's the vocation of Israel? Why did God call God's people into being as a people? St. Paul offers a letter, uh, an answer in his letter to the Romans this morning. Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again, he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him, the Gentiles shall hope. St. Paul is getting at the vocation of Israel by looking at texts from prophets like Isaiah, uh, including the one we also heard uh, this morning. That gorgeous description in Isaiah of a world healed from the wounds of sin and the fall, 
a world where a king of Israel, the root of Jesse, that is a son of David, will rule not by human standards, but by God's righteousness, where evil will be destroyed by the words of this king, that's the rod from his mouth, his words, but violence and fear and death will be no more. And not only among the people of Israel, but among all peoples. And even among, and this is some of the most beautiful stuff in that Isaiah reading, even among non-human creatures. You've got the predators and the prey uh, living together. You've got children playing near snakes. This, This peace in every corner of creation. And as Isaiah writes, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples, the nations, the Gentiles. They shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. According to the promise to the patriarchs, according to the prophets, according to St. Paul, the vocation of Israel was to heal the world by being a holy people that draws the rest of the world to the God of Abraham and into the new way of life, that peaceful and just age to come that the God of Abraham is bringing what we call the kingdom of God. Israel's vocation is not about itself. It's to be a light to the Gentiles, that is to all peoples and ultimately to the whole of creation. Out of the desert he comes, wild and coarse, speaking a hard word, repent. Turn completely around and be who you really are. Repent, he says to Israel. But again, he's saying it to us too, the church, who have left our old backward lives in the waters of baptism and have risen from the waters to a new life, a life headed in the right direction. We who are through baptism into Christ's life, death, and resurrection, God's own people, but let's be clear, and we all know this, who can still get turned around in the wrong direction. John the Baptist comes again to the church this Advent, like he always does. And he says to us, in as much as you are going the wrong direction, turn around. Inasmuch as you have forgotten who you are, turn around. Inasmuch as you have forgotten your vocation, turn around. Inasmuch as you have forgotten what it means to be God's people, turn around. Because, he tells us, if we don't reduce God to a private possession who meets our own needs, if we don't circle the wagons and close ourselves off and care so much about our own survival and our own status as God's people that we forget why God wanted a holy people in the first place, if we don't behave as if we've been called for our our salvation alone, then by God's grace, we can and will be a people so holy that we can be God's instrument for the healing and salvation of the world. It can be a people so holy that we would draw the rest of the world to the God of Abraham and Jesus Christ. A people so holy that we draw the rest of the world into a new way of life, that new way of life that is the peaceful and just age to come that God is bringing into the world through Jesus Christ and that we call the kingdom of God.